Yeah, g'day. Uh, we're here at uh, Bagara Almonds in Remark, our family farm during the blossom. Um, I'm just going to talk a bit about the bees. Um, we've got bees from beekeepers and our own hives here, and we've got roughly five hives to the hectare. Um, we've just well, in the last three years gotten into the bees and um, Rob Johnson here has been a good mentor to uh, my sister and I with uh, our few hives and sort of getting us out of bed and kicking us along and uh, he's been a great help. Yeah, well, um, the main thing with um, bees and, and the almonds, so generally the beekeeper tries to get his hive on uh, good porridge uh, prior to the almonds so that uh, bee numbers are high. Um, there's a, a, a certain criteria for bees that come onto almonds that's got to be met. Um, it varies, but uh, basically you need four, five, six frames of brood in there in a queen, and preferably 25 to 30,000 uh, bees in the hive for it to be um, of any use in pollination or to be, get maximum use. Hives can be stronger, and some of them that come from um, interstate and from places that have got uh, better forage uh, can have up to 40,000 bees in them. Yeah, and now going back to um, what time of the year, well, uh, preferably you have them on the almonds uh, late uh, July because the main flowering time and the peak of flowering is around about 12th of August, but that varies, of course, according to the season. And they're generally left on there for about a month where to position your hives. Every beekeeper has his own ideas on it, but the closer you are to the target, um, the better. So bees can forage up to five k's away, but it becomes pretty negative after a while. In other words, the energy used to go out is spent, uh, uh, exceeds the load they can uh, bring back. But generally um, in pollination, remember it's that time of the year, August is fairly cold, so the closer you have your bees to the target, the better. And um, yeah, and again, it's these guys are bringing in hundreds of bees, so they have them on pallets. So sometimes they just stack them in blocks. And um, but other uh, smaller beekeepers, of course, you can space your hives out around, which is possibly the best, the best yeah. idea. Um, the other thing is, not many people know this, but bees can do. Oh, they can visit about 100 flowers each trip. Um, just as a little aside, it takes a million flowers and something else to, to produce a box of honey. But that's not quite true because the bees are breeding and all that sort of stuff, so they're using honey and pollen and everything. But if you were to just get the bees going out and putting it straight in, the, the nectar they collect, putting it straight in, then it takes a million flowers to produce a box of honey. The people don't understand is that Nectar, it powers the hive, it's the carbohydrate. But the uh, pollen, the protein, and particularly almonds, they're quite a high protein. Uh, protein for bees, it's preferable if you have it up at about 20%. And so you need that protein for the brood. So a good thing about putting your bees on almonds is that they produce a lot of brood. A queen can lay up to 1,500 eggs a day. You'll hear claims of higher, or we'll, we'll stay in the 1,000 to 1,500. And if you figure that out, a queen can lay, and she's laying constantly, um, she can lay up to over a month, that's well over 30,000 bees produced. Now, of course, what you've got to understand is while bees are working flat out like this, the workers, uh, or the field bees, only have a lifespan of three to four weeks. It's again, dependent on weather and everything else, but three to five weeks sees most of the, uh, field bees out. Now, in the hive where all these young bees are being hatched, there's a thing called the junior hormone feedback loop and basically the, the young bees stay young because the field bees bring in um, a hormone, oleic acid, and it keeps the, young, the bees young. And as the field force drops off, then that level of hormone drops and then you often see the bees of an afternoon uh, orientating in front of the hive and they're getting ready to go out and work. 
Also at this time of the year, they're quite aggressive because the last duty they do is guard duty. And, and so it's quite uncomfortable standing here while they're doing yeah. their guard duty. They're angry. <laughs> yeah, they're angry. Bees are attracted to almonds because it's an evolutionary thing. Um, almonds produce a poison, I can't pronounce the name of it, but it's attractive to bees and it's actually toxic to much smaller insects. Remembering that the uh, uh, almond pollen is very heavy so it doesn't transfer by, by wind and that's another thing I'll bring up straight away. Uh, the reason you need bees, and we didn't explain that, the reason you need bees in, in almonds is that the pollen is heavy, doesn't transfer by wind, and and the other thing is that many uh, almonds are self, uh, not uh, self infertile. They they're not self fertile, uh, so they need um, pollen from another variety of almond to actually pollinate the flower, and that's what bees do. And if you go through the block, you'll see at times there'll be a row of trees flowering, and then a row, three or four rows of trees that are just starting to flower and there so the trees that are flowering are the pollinators and that's where the bees really come into their own they can transfer it across this poison that uh, and as i said it's a evolutionary thing uh, kills off smaller insects that wouldn't be able to take the pollen from one tree to the other and yeah so we've started our hives mainly what started off as a a hobby and an interest but um, we are planning on it getting a bit bigger as um, I suppose as our time frees up more um, when we're not replanting and things like that we'll, we will start concentrating more on, on um, our own hives and we sort of think it's important not only for our business for a bit of security there because um, you know um, some beekeepers might have a bad year and we could top it up with that uh, but we also think it's a good thing to have the bees here all year round for um, cover crops and even just, just the trees like we're, we're here on, on Mother Earth as some people say and you've got like, to love it all it's not just about the money and not just about the money so farmers should consider that and before they go and mulch their cover crops or get rid of the sour sobs to sort of think about that that the bees yeah need a little bit of other food source they need well. yeah, variety yeah. they really do yeah. they're still stroppy <laughs> yeah yep. no, move out